given uh, rho pi 1 bar, we can now uniquely identify C 1. Okay. So, essentially if I am given rho pi 1, note that by our construction, so these remaining things can be anything, but by our construction C 1 is once again the first clause that is unrestricted with respect to this restriction rho pi 1. Okay. So, if I am given this restriction, then I can uniquely identify what my clause C 1 was. Okay. And uh, we will see later on that and with some more info, we can get pi 1 and pi 1 bar as well. So, what that information is we will see later on, but the key thing is that uh, to find out C 1, if, if you are given rho pi 1 bar, we can uniquely identify C 1. Okay. Now, what is the set, I, I mean what is the size of this restriction or from which set do we pick this restriction? So, how many variables are being fixed over here? So, rho fixes how many variables? Uh, L variables. How many variables pi 1 bar is fixing? d 1 variables. Okay. So, the number of variables that are unfixed is L minus d 1. right? So, rho pi 1 bar, so no, rho pi 1 bar belongs to R L minus d 1. So, in rho basically L variables were unfixed. Now, I have fixed another extra d 1 variable. So, rho pi 1 bar belongs to R L minus d 1. Okay. So, now yeah, we continue in this manner. So, we define C 2. Okay. So, C 2 is defined to be the clause uh, or the first clause that is unfixed by fixed to 1 by rho pi 1. Okay. Pi 2 is basically the remaining set of variables that is it is a restriction of pi minus pi 1. Okay. to C 2 and uh, let us say that D 2 is the size of pi 2. Similarly, pi 2 bar is the unique setting of variables in C 2 such that C 2 is not identically equal to 1. 
Okay. So, we just continue in this manner. So, we have uh, rho pi 1. Okay. So, in rho pi 1, C 1 got set to 1. Now, look at the first clause that is not set to 1 by rho pi 1. Okay, so, it is only setting some d 1 variable. So, there will be some other clause that is not being set to 1. Look at that clause. Look at the remaining set of variables in that clause. Okay, so, from pi remove the variables of pi 1 okay, and look at the variables that are present in C 2. Okay, so, this will be our C 2 in this case rho pi 1. So, this is our C 2. Okay. So, look at the remaining set of variables, uh, yeah. So, look at the remaining set of variables over here. Okay. Now, pi 2 bar once again is the unique setting of those variables such that C 2 is not 1 okay. and we keep on continuing this. Okay. So, how long do we continue? So, we will continue unless and until we get S variables. Okay. So, in general, let me write this C i is equal to first clause that is not fixed to 1 by rho pi 1, pi 2 up to pi i minus 1. Now, pi i will be the restriction of pi minus pi 1, pi 2 up to pi i minus 1. So, remove all these variables from pi and look at what remaining variables belong to this clause. Okay. And now, pi i bar is the unique setting of the variables sorry, this one is not C 2, this is pi 2. So, unique setting of the variables in pi 2 such that C 2 is not 1. Okay. So, unique setting of the variable in pi i such that C i is not identically 1. Okay. So, we continue or let me just write this as we end this process once we have restricted exactly s variables okay so we get pi 1, pi 2 up to pi k and correspondingly pi 1 bar up to pi k bar. Okay. So, what are we saying? So, well, in first stage, we have restricted d 1 variables, then we restrict d 2 variable. Okay. 
in the ith stage, well, I have not written it over here, but I can write it over here. B i is basically the size of pi i, right? How did I write this? Yeah, B i is equal to size of pi i. So, we continue till we reach a point where the sum of these d i's is exactly equal to s. Now, note that what do I mean by exactly equal to s? Now, look at this last restriction. So, in that last restriction, it is not necessarily that I will be restricting all the variables. So, basically I, I would have found a clause C k which is unrestricted. So, in C k I will only pick that many variables which would give me a total of s fixed variables. Okay. So, note uh, in the last step only a subset of the variables in of pi might be restricted in C k, but that is ok for us, it does not matter. Even restricting a subset will keep that as unrestricted. Okay. So, now <coughs> first yeah, first few variables such that it becomes exactly s. Yes. And now I look. It will with setting, uh, so restricting it to those variables will not set f uh, pi 2 pi 2 up to pi k 2 to 1, it will not set that clause to 1. Okay, but that, that 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 actually doesn't matter to us. What matters to us is that even f restricted to rho pi one bar pi two bar up to pi k bar will not set that clause to one. That will be true, and that is ex actually what matters for us. Okay, that is what we'll be using next. Yeah, actually I think I can erase the statement of the lemma as well, because we are just proving a slightly different thing. Okay. So, let uh, pi star bar be equal to pi 1 bar pi 2 bar up to pi k bar and uh, rho star is equal to rho pi star bar. Okay. We will also define two strings. So, remember that what I said is that uh, firstly we will be identifying this clause. So, we saw how we can identify C 1. Okay. Now, note that if we are given rho pi 1 bar pi 2 bar, okay, then and along with it I am also given let us say what pi 1 bar is. Okay, so, I fix according to or sorry, let us say I am given pi 1 and I am given rho pi 1 followed by pi 2 bar, then I can uniquely identify C 2, right, because C 2 will be the first clause which is not set to 1 by rho pi 1 pi 2 bar, because pi 1 is already setting c 1 to 1 and by our construction that is the first thing. So, that will give us. Now, the question is that we can identify these clauses in this manner, but how do I get pi 1 pi 2 bar? Okay, so, I said that with some little bit of more information I can actually get what these restrictions are as well. That is what I will define next. Okay. So, define 
for all i belonging to 1 to k okay a i belonging to 0 1 to the power t okay what was t so t was the so we took a t cnf so okay so t was the maximum size of a clause okay so, so essentially what i will do is so a i of j so the jth bit so a i is basically a t bit string so the jth bit of a i will be equal to 1 if the jth variable in c i is set by pi i and it is equal to 0 otherwise. So, if the jth variable is one of those d i variables. Okay. So, note that in C i there are d i variables which are fixed by pi i. right? So, if the jth variable is one of those so that fixing can either be either fixing to 0 or fixing to 1 then I will set a i j to 1 otherwise I set it to 0. So, essentially what a i helps us in uh, figuring out is which are the variables in a clause that are being set by pi i. Okay. And I have k of them, so I know all I mean I know it for all pi 1 up to pi k. I will also define another string uh, define b belonging to 0 1 to the power s as so b of i is equal to the um, have I written it? Okay, equal to the value to which the ith variable is set to by pi 1 up to pi k. Okay. Yeah, so note that uh, we are fixing a total of s variables. Okay. So, we had chosen pi 1 up to pi k such that s a total of s many variables were getting fixed. So, b i is basically the value to which these restrictions are fixing those s variables okay so if the exact value so if let's say pi uh, and of course note that all these pi's are distinct by the construction they don't overlap all of them are distinct so if some pi t uh, some pi k is setting or pi not k pi uh, maybe pi g or something if pi g is setting some variable to 0 then b of i of that variable b i will be 0 and otherwise it is 1. Okay. So, now the last or not the last, but the second last claim is why is this an injunction okay. and lastly we will talk about the size. So, claim given rho star these a i's i going from 1 to k and b we can uniquely construct rho. So, if I am given this rho star that is rho pi bar st or pi star bar and these uh, strings a i's and b then I can uniquely construct my function rho and not just rho we will show that we can actually get 
all of these pi i's and pi i bars as well from this. So, this proof is actually easy, it follows by our construction. So, once again first we will get C 1, what is C 1? Okay. So, C 1 is the first clause not identically one with respect to rho star or let me use the notation actually instead of writing this manner. first clause in f restricted to rho star that is not identically 1 is C 1. So, we get what our C 1 is. Now, we use a 1 and B to identify pi 1 and pi 1 bar. How do we get it? So, I have C 1, I look at A 1 first. So, A 1 will tell me exactly which are the variables which were set by pi 1. I know what those variables are. B will tell me what are those values that they were set to. Okay. So, it now tells me what pi 1 is. Now, once I know pi 1, I have my clause C 1, I can look at the clause and I can look at my values of pi 1 and I can get pi 1 bar, because pi 1 bar is a unique setting of those variables such that that clause does not uh, become 1. Okay. So, I have this. So, I have gotten pi 1, I have gotten pi 1 bar and I have gotten C 1. Now, next I again go in a iterative manner. So, let rho 1 be equal to rho star minus. So, in rho star what do I have? In rho star I have rho followed by pi 1 bar, pi 2 bar up to pi k bar. So, I will remove pi 1 bar from rho star. Okay. Now, those variables which are which were being restricted by whatever pi 1 or pi in this case pi 1 bar. I remove them from rho star okay. and I will add the restriction pi 1. Now, what does this achieve? This is exactly what I said earlier. What this achieves is that this makes C 1 equal to 1 because pi 1 makes C 1 equal to 1. So, now what can I say about rho 1? What can I say about this? Exactly. The first clause here that is not identically 1 is C 2 now by the very construction. Okay. Okay. So, first clause here not identically 1 is C 2. Okay. Once again use pi sorry A 2 and B to get pi 2 and pi 2 bar. Now, continuing in this manner, we get pi 1 up to pi k and pi 1 bar up to pi k bar. Okay. So, now here you can see why we 
I mean only getting a subset of the variables of the last clause was good enough for us because what we only want is that that clause should remain unrestricted. That is the only property that we are using here. It is not necessary that each of those variables are being set to 1 by pi key. That is all. Okay. Because after that we do not proceed anymore. So, this proves that it is a injective function. So, given rho star a i b, I can uniquely, uh, okay. So, I have gotten this. So, now uh, I have all this. So, how do I get rho? So, what is rho? So, I know all of this. I know rho star. So, therefore, we can obtain rho. Okay. Just remove these restrictions pi 1 bar up to pi k bar from rho star that is all. So, this completes the proof of this claim. Okay. So, now we have established that it is a 1 to 1 function. What is left to prove? That the size of this string or this string actually comes from a set of size whatever r I mean whatever was it r l to the uh, r to the power l minus s times uh, w. So, that r to the power l minus s is clear because so how many variables are restricted in rho star. So, already I have uh, L variables restricted by rho and pi bar a uh, pi star bar is restricting another s variables. Okay. So, rho star belongs to r to the power L minus s. Okay. So, that many variables remain free. So, that part is done. So, now we have to show that uh, and what is the size of the string b? So, b well b belongs to 0 1 to the power s. So, b comes from a set of size 2 to the power s. So, we have r l minus s we have 2 to the power s. So, now the only thing that is left to show is that a i i going from 1 to k comes from a set of size how much? How much do we need? So, w was 4 t to the power s. I already have a 2 power s. So, what remains is 2 t to the power s. Okay. So, this I will I mean so there is just uh, two observations which will actually give this the first observation what is the structure of these AIs. Okay. So, note that each AI comes. So, each AI is basically a binary string of length t and each AI has at least one one right. Because at least one variable. So, in each of these pi i's at least one variable gets restricted okay. and the total number of ones in all the AIs is how many? S the total number of variables that are getting restricted is s. Okay. So, each a i has at least 1 1 and total number of 1s in all the a i's is equal to s. Now, using these two you can find out that the, so I will just leave this as an exercise that the number of sequences of the above form is at most 2 t to the power s. Okay. Also note one more thing that k is actually less than or equal to s. 
k. So, the number of pi 1 up to pi k that is at most s because in each of these there is at least a single one. Okay, so, you can so this is again a simple combinatorial argument you can think about this. Okay, so, this completes the proof of Hastad switching lemma. Okay. So, the key aspect I mean of course, uh, this is a very complex proof and okay, so one more thing that I should mention here is that the proof that Hastad actually gave. So, this proof was given by Hastad during his PhD. Okay, so, this was part of his PhD thesis and the proof that he gave was slightly different. He gave a probabilistic argument. He did not explicitly give the construction of all these. So, he argued that such, uh, such an injection actually exists. So, this uh, constructive proof was actually given later by Rasborov. Okay, so, Rasborov, so this proof is actually even simpler. So, his proof, Hastad's proof is a little bit more complex, but uh, this was a simpler proof that was given by Rasborov. And uh, what else did I want to mention? Yeah, so of course, we in this uh, in this lecture we only proved it for the constant 16, but as I said that uh, with a little bit more work you can actually prove it for gamma where gamma equals 4.16. And also the other thing is also true even if you prove it for 16, you can also prove the size lower bound with the constant 16 as well. Okay, you can actually modify the proof that was given last time, so that it works with the constant 16 as well. So, both ways are actually open. Okay. Okay, so, I will stop here. Yeah, yeah. So, that as I said it actually comes from solving an equation. So, you get a equation uh, using this I mean so, basically they showed that this is bounded by some alpha to the power s and that alpha is basically an equation which has this p p uh, p p n n and then they showed that uh, solving that equation you get it as gamma you get alpha as equal to gamma p t. So, gamma p t is one of the roots of that equation. It is a Yeah, so it is a. I mean, it's not a linear equation. I I, I don't remember. It's it, it's an exponential equation. Yeah, yeah. See, there are actually many places where we can improvise a little bit, right? Because if you remember last time, the probability p that we took was how much? It was n to the power minus 1 over d minus 1 right. And we just said that well that is less than half for d greater than or equal to 3. But if n increases actually that becomes much lesser than half and here we are only showing it for n uh, for p less than half. So, that is one place where you can improvise for large n of n right. and uh, the way yeah. What else? Yeah, I think the way we did that counting, oh, I think we, I have erased it. But uh, so where we had this uh, two factorials, okay, and uh, one we took that ratio of one factorial over another, and we took the maximum term of the top factorial over the minimum term raised to the power. And I think that can also be improvised. So, yeah I, I, yeah, so I do not know much how that thing works, but of course, it can be made smaller. But the important thing is that the essential idea is this uh, construction of this injection. Okay, so, construction of this one to one map and uh, yeah, so this is the crux of the proof. 
it is yeah yeah it's a general function it is a general function no it's not well it is not a general function actually it is a function which is representable as a tcnf now any function as i said yesterday that uh, day before yesterday that any function can be represented in cnf form or dnf form right but for small t's it is not necessary that every function will be representable if you take t to be large enough of course if i take t to be n then any function is representable as uh, ncnf or a ndnf right so 